Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a watch launched in 2016, the first ever Grand Seiko to be built at the Micro Artist Studio. This is the Spring Drive 8-Day SBGD001. The cold forged platinum case is 43 millimeters in diameter, 13.5 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, 51.4 millimeters, with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. This is a large watch, purposeful, but large. We'll talk about the size in a minute. First, I want to recommend that if your wrist is any smaller than mine, so smaller than 16 centimeters circumference, I'm going to go ahead and recommend you get one of the Crador H2s because this only fits on a 16 centimeter circumference or larger wrist. It fits well and it is low enough to fit underneath the cuff with a sloped crystal and a stepped flank, but it's just so broad across the wrist that you don't really want to risk a wrist smaller than mine. Now, taking a quick look at the strap, you can see it is medium rectangular scale alligator leather, gloss finish, monotone black stitch to match the black leather. It is sheer cut on its profile. It is bolstered to give it thickness. That is to say it's stuffed. You can see that the layers of leather used are extremely thick. Calfskin on the bottom and buttery soft. You can see this is a brand new Grand Seiko factory strap. Taking a quick look at the buckle, you can see externally the Grand Seiko logo in polish and media blasting. It is a single fold buckle and it has twin trigger release. So you have to press these triggers in to release it. It's not friction fit. Now internally, you can see that this is made in Japan. That might not strike you as unusual for a Japanese watch, but keep in mind that the Grand Seiko gold, whether yellow or rose, those buckles are made in Italy. So the platinum Grand Seiko clasp is made in Japan. And in order to include a full platinum clasp with a platinum watch, Grand Seiko uses a combination of PT950 and the harder and more mechanically durable PT900. This is where a lot of Swiss brands are gonna give you a white gold clasp, claiming that the mechanical properties of platinum are such that it's too soft for the swing arm mechanism. So Grand Seiko, to keep everything platinum, uses PT900 for the swing arm to reinforce its strength. Taking a quick look at the case, you can see that it is a large quasi tonneau profile. It's somewhere between a round case and a tonneau. The lugs are integrated, and you can see there's a little bit of a bevel on the side. Everything's of high polish. More on that in a moment. The case is cold forged to increase its hardness and its density in order to allow Grand Seiko's tin plate polishing method or Zeratsu polish to be rendered on the case. So this is a black polishing or a mirror finish in the Swiss style. So you've heard of black polish on Swiss movement parts like regular or screws. Well, this whole case is black polished. Now, Zaratsu, of course, is just the Japanese term for Zalitz. Zalitz machines of European origin are used to polish this mirrored surface, but the foremost practitioners of this Zalitz machine polishing today are the folks in Japan working at Seiko and Grand Seiko, and it takes three years to master this process by which the surface to be milled is held directly against a spinning tin plate. By eye and hand coordination and craft knowledge, the tolerances of the bevels and the lugs and the shear of the case are all created created, again, manually and by eye. So this case is hand finished. We have a crown with the Grand Seiko logo, both media blasted and polished. We have a shallow bezel. You can see one of the features of this case. It's a little bit of a styling trick. The bezel is sunken below the top of the lug. So the lugs don't get cropped with a bezel on top. The bezel is actually scrunched in or shrunken a little bit so that it sits inboard of the hood of the lug. So the lug can be a taller arcing form and the bezel can be set lower on the case because if you put the bezel on top of the lug, this would be a very, very thick watch. So you can see the slope down from the peak of the lug to the bottom of the bezel. It sits cradled between the four lugs for a thinner case. The crystal is dramatically cambered and boxed. So a box section crystal is the most expensive kind. And you can see this has that dramatic box section with camber on the top. No expense was spared. This is sometimes described as a diamond dust dial. That is the effect it creates. It has a shimmering, lustrous, granular profile. It's achieved via a combination of polishing, sandblasting, and plating. And so they call this the 
diamond dust dial effect. Now, a couple of subsidiary setting modes here before we talk about the dial. You have a hacking seconds function. You also have a travel time function. So you can set the hour hand in one hour increments. So if you're traveling, you don't disrupt the minute hand and you don't stop the seconds hand. So the watch maintains its precision operation even as you travel and change time zone. Now, pull that crown out all the way, you get hacking or stop seconds. Now you can set to a reference time. So there's a ray hole, which visually unifies the bezel with the dial base. And you can see it's stepped up from the center dial. The dial furniture is best in the world. And by that, I mean the logo, the name of the company, the indices and the hands are all crafted by artists who only make these parts all day long. Using micro jigs and diamond-tipped micrometric milling tools, they create the razor-sharp faceting on these indices as well as hands, and the black polish is finished up with a diamond-based paste, so you have this perfectly mirrored surface. You can see that the hands are black polished across their top, and then their bevels are not only mirror polished, but they break with a razor sharp distinction between the top and the flank of the hands. So all of these things are black polished, except for the seconds hand, which is fired blue steel. Now, spring drive. You can see there is no start, there is no stop to this second sand. It is a completely smooth sweep. Spring drive is a technology that was developed between 1977 and 1999. Yes, it took 22 years and innumerable patents. There are three barrels in this movement. There are no batteries, there are no capacitors, there are no motors. The hands are geared directly to the governing wheel driven by the spring, and the spring provides the sole motive force for the display. Because the governing wheel moves in only one direction, you don't have the tick and the tock, the start and the stop of a Swiss lever escapement. Here's how it works. Three barrels, eight days of power reserve. They drive a gear train that turns this governing wheel. The governing wheel creates an induced electrical current that wakes up a quartz oscillator and an integrated circuit. That then produces an electromagnetic braking force that slows down the wheel to ensure that this watch achieves precision of plus or minus 10 seconds a month. Remember, the standard for quartz watch is 15 seconds a month. So this, with no batteries and no motors, is more accurate than a standard quartz watch, and by a huge percentage. Now, the watch, of course, does not feature a conventional tick and a tock, uh, but it does get made by conventional watch makers, which is to say the Micro Artist Studio, founded in 2000, making about two to three dozen watches a year out of the Shujiri Watch Studio up in Nagano Prefecture. They are creating the minute repeaters. They are creating the Crador H2. They are creating watches that are built in the tradition of the Swiss Valley du Jeu, but with a Japanese sensibility. When Micro Artist was first stood up in the early 2000s, a delegation from Japan went over to Switzerland and visited Geneva and Neuchâtel and the Vallée de Jeu and La Chaux de Fonds, and they brought back the best methodology they found. They even kept the same gentian wood that they'd observed being used to create anglage in Philippe Dufour's atelier. So you get that standard of finish here. You get a lovely satin graining, an enormous three-quarter style bridge reminiscent of an old pocket watch. You get a beautiful bevel that is a mile wide on the edge of the bridge, and you could see absolutely no compromise that is entirely hand laid. All of the screws are black polished on their head, chamfered on their slots and circumference, and then fired to create a nice even cobalt blue. We have a case back power reserve indicator. Note that all the jewel and the screw sinks have been mirror beveled internally. And shockingly, the watch is 100 meters water resistant. This watch is full of surprises. You'll also appreciate that there's a little bit of a nod to Japanese culture and what wine enthusiasts would call terroir. So we have the image of the mountain ranges around Shiojiri. Some say this is Mount Fuji, but I checked, and Shiojiri is about 169 kilometers from Mount Fuji. I haven't established they can actually see that mountain from the studio, but I know this. It is a mountainous region, so we have this image of the local peaks. And then we have the governing wheel as a sort of rising sun peeking over the line of mountains. Now, we also have a little engraving. That's a bellflower 
local flora around the Shiojiri workshop where Micro Artist is located, and that is a little stamp or engraving that is included on all the watches made there. Remember, they only have about 10 to 12 people working at any given time, so this is a very impressive signature. The real cognoscenti of watches know exactly what that means and why it is so special. So there is a lot to love in this watch. Full of symbolism, as well as literalism, it is a fantastic timekeeper and a verifiable work of art that you can wear on your wrist. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.